uh, situation that happened with the Justice Democrats and its two founders, Cenk Uger of the Young Turks and Kyle Kalinske of Secular Talk. Um, Daniel, I, I think you've, you've really covered this story or like what, what's been happening the most because we know a couple of people who work or volunteer with the Justice Democrats. So why don't you let our viewers know what's going on? Uh, first of all, you know, we've interviewed a number of people that are Justice Democrats. It's, uh, you know, I think that we still stand by they are very interesting, very good people running for office. So actually I spoke to Matt Cotton, who was the former director of Justice Democrats of Illinois. He had uh, actually just put together all the paperwork to formally incorporate with uh, the party. Uh, he was in charge of Marie Newman, who's running in the Illinois 3rd Congressional District, Samina Mustafa, who's running in the 5th, Anthony Clark, who was running in the 7th, and David Gill, who's running in the 13th. So uh, basically, we, we, were t- we went back and forth on uh, these. I basically just summarized the notes of what we were talking about. So he uh, read the uh, Gateway Pundit article on the 21st, which was uh, titled, Must Read Young Turks host Jenk Uger, Disturbing Sexist, Racist, and Pro-Rape Past. And again, the Gateway Pundits a very, very hard. I'm not sure you could consider them news. They're more like just put stuff out there, right-wing uh, punditry. I mean, not even punditry. And it's talking about this, um, again, this is for those of you who aren't familiar with the whole circumstance. It's talking about a very sexist uh, blog that Jenk had written 18 years ago back when he was young, single, in Miami, and still a Republican at that point. Yeah. And so the article, as, as Matt put it, he basically said it, he summed it up as he's really upset that he wasn't getting laid. And this was an article about his frustration with that. And as everyone that watches uh, TYT, Jenk is not the person who was 18 years ago. If you've seen Mad as Hell, it documents that a lot more. Mm-hmm. You know, I've met Jenk. You know, I've been uh, I've watched TYT. A lot of us watch on and off TYT. Mm-hmm. He's he's a very different person than he was 18 years ago. And, and I just think- for the record, too, I've watched TYT numerous times, and Jank has mentioned on the show even long before he founded Justice Democrats and Wolfpack about how he used to be when he was a Republican. This shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. He mentioned yeah. how much of a buffoon and an idiot yeah. and how much dumb decisions and stupid mistakes that he has made and how he has changed. You know, it's, it's called the human experience. Right. We, we are not the same people who we were 10 or 12 or 18 years ago. We all change. We all grow. We adapt. And Jank himself has mentioned, even before this article has come out, how stupid he was and how he wish he could tell his younger self, grow up, that's a dumb way of thinking on how the world works, you know, be mature, adapt, talk to people, expand your mind. In addition, these articles themselves were deleted by Jenk over a decade ago yeah. because he thought that they didn't agree with, he didn't agree with where he was now. However, the Justice Democrats staff um, decided that, okay, because of this article that was written, again, it's... They're, they connected it to the Me Too movement, and I see the Me Too movement as people that are being abused by people and work, someone that has a higher amount of power over you, taking advantage of that relationship so that you can't say no. Things like that. This is Jenk writing an article. This is him saying things. This is a free speech thing. 18 so, years ago. 18 years ago. And so because of this coup, Jenk and Kyle uh, resigned from the board because they didn't want to tear apart Justice Democrats. So... The uh, executive director and the campaign manager of Justice Democrats uh, did a tweet on this. Uh, the words and conduct of Mr. Uger and Mr. Kohler, another person that's in uh, TYT, posts uh, denigrate what it means to be a Justice Democrat. We do not feel that Mr. Uger fit, is fit to lead or participate in an organization that truly believes in women's issues and the issues of black and brown people are all our issues And now the issue with this is a huge amount of Justice Democrats are fighting back. And that's, again, what I got in contact with uh, Man Cotton. He actually disbanded his group as a – because of this, because he no longer wants to associate himself with uh, Justice Democrats. And I think personally where it hit me is I look at myself and I say, I'm not the same person I was five years ago. I'm not the same person I was ten years ago. And – and I think that's good. I think it's good to progress, to progressively become a better person. I think views I have right now, five years from now, I'm going to look back and say, why do I, Why did I have those views that I have right now? So I see it as a very natural part of being human. And from my perspective, when I saw what happened with Justice Democrats, 
I said this is like they're almost declaring war on the idea of progress. They're saying Jank posted something that he has, like, like uh, Kit said, distanced himself from numerous times. He has, uh, he's a different person than he wa- who he was then. He has deleted that well before it was even pub- uh, public. They actually found it through a, um, like a, a, a site, rem- something that remembers posts that have been deleted, a web- mm-hmm. website like that. Again, a uh, right-wing uh, site posts it, and the Justice Democrats take a hold of it. I just have a huge issue with that kind of mentality that's basically saying you can't change as a person. If you say something that is currently unpopular or or violates current norms, I mean, then I guess every single person that has ever lived more than 40 years is unsalvageable by any means. I think everyone here, look, everyone here has made mistakes. We've all made mistakes. None of us are perfect. And the Justice Democrats, you know, I'm going to tell you guys this. Don't look for perfection because you're going to fail. All right? There's no such thing as a perfect human being. Jank Uger didn't do anything wrong. And what you guys did by removing Jank and then some, and, and another consequence, getting rid of Kyle as well, is that you've hurt yourself politically as a movement because now you have a lot of people on your social media page, on Facebook and Twitter, asking, well, when are you guys really going to talk about Jank and Kyle? Yeah. We have questions. We have concerns about this movement, this political movement for the Justice Democrats. And other people have been saying, well, what about you guys who got rid of Jank and Kyle? Are, are you guys perfect? Are you guys saints? Because yeah. the answer is no. So, I mean, the, the Justice Democrats... This is this story is not going to go anywhere, and people aren't going to forget it because people are upset. Remember, Jenk Uger and Kyle Kalinske started the Justice Democrats in the aftermath of the 2016 presidential election, yeah, so that they could reform the Democratic Party. And so, on that note, there's been uh, change.org petitions with at the time we looked at it, 1,500 signatures. 1,500. Yeah. Wow. And you have um, hashtags. I stand. I stand with Jenk. <clears throat> and. Here's the reason I, I, I very much worry about this. I, this is an issue with leadership of Justice Democrats. This is not an issue with the candidates. No. The biggest loser in this situation are the candidates because I, you know, I look at you know, what's the system? How does Justice Democrat operate? How does it succeed? Justice Democrats required the Young Turks for publicity and donation ab- uh, capacity. And I talked to Matt. Uh, we, we, he was saying that I'm, he's very concerned that what this did was it'll get a bunch of these guys into primary through primaries, mm-hmm. and maybe a few of them win because it just ju- just happened before uh, the primaries are happening, especially in Illinois where they're where we are because it's much uh, sooner than other states. Yeah, it but in they're March. not going to have any money after that because they they don't have that publicity that TYT would would offer, and they're not going to have that funding. So this devastates the fifty one people because you, Justice Democrats will not have enough money to support fifty one candidates. I don't see how they would possibly get a wide enough reach, wide enough donation pool, especially now that they've caused this schism within the party. Uh, but again, this the biggest loser from this are the candidates themselves. In addition, when I was reading the statement written by the Justice Democrats and they did this, they said that they talked to all the candidates and there was a unanim- unanimous, unanimous consent. I spoke with Matt and that was not true. None of the candidates were informed at least the ones that he was managing. It was the handlers for those uh, candidates that were informed on the issue. So I'm very curious to see how many of the uh, candidates actually agree with this move. I'm sure they don't because, you know, if you're a politician, you have to have a certain things. You have to have money. Sadly, it's the way the system works. You have to have some amount of money. You have to have publicity. And you have to have a system backing you. Justice Democrats was the system that would back you, but TYT was that money I mean, you have to be you have to be on news. People have to know about you. Mm-hmm. And Jenk Uger and Kyle Kalinske on both the respective shows would talk about the Justice Democrats movement and the candidates that are running in the primaries, and this hurts them yeah. in the long run. And plus, it makes people question whether or not uh, the Democratic Party can be reformed now from the inside. Because I know uh, you've mentioned numerous times, Daniel, what's what's an easier way? Build a, a multi-million dollar corporation or do a hostile takeover of a multi-million yeah. dollar corporation. Right. And the thing is, like for me, I'm, I'm an advocate for third parties. I, I believe that the Green Party, Socialist Alternative, and yes, even the Libertarian Party, uh, you know, all of them have a right to be on the political stage and so that we can have a vibrant multi-party system. And I do support, you know, 
the idea that the brand new Congress, our revolution, and even the Justice Democrats could reform the DNC. But when the fact that the Justice Democrats made this move, this unpopular move that can systematically affect 51 candidates. They held they held yeah. all these people hostage yeah. for their own political gain. I mean, this it's, was... It's devastating. And, and, and we, we don't know what the long-term impact right. will be, but uh, we'll find out come the primary election. So, but on that note, going back to what Matt was saying, said because of all this, he felt that um, justice Democrats had become, in, in his words, a social justice movement, that it was looking to, you know, like Kit was saying, like, if you're not perfect, if you don't fit this almost, this nigh, uh, a nigh obtainable mold of what it is to be a human and a good person, yeah. then you are cast out. And then in a sense, that is a system that, uh, by its own definition of how it works, makes the cone of people you talk to smaller and in a, I would consider it a form of extremism, as you're saying, only this person that do, I would even say doesn't exist. Because you're, in a, ostensibly, you're going against, again, when I say you're going against the progress of a human mind. Yeah. You're going against what, the human, what a human being is. You're going against the human brain. And then it just yeah. becomes a matter of appearing one way or another. So for those reasons, uh, Matt actually pulled himself out of uh, Justice Democrats. So no, he's going to stay with and support Anthony Clark because... That's the, his resources available to him. But, um, you know, he was, uh, you know, before he would talk every now and then about how he's very excited about working with Justice Democrats and bringing this change to Illinois. And now he feels like all of a sudden it's something he can't even associate himself with. So, yeah. I, you know, I was looking forward to Justice Democrats because I want someone to do something different. I'm all about doing something different. I'm all about progress, doing something different, changing. And I was very much behind the Justice Democrats because they were doing something different but now i'm not sure what they're doing yeah uh, do we know who's going to be taking over the leadership role since jank and kyle are now gone um i don't have their name right in front there it is the uh De justice democrat executive director uh sir cat i can't pronounce his uh, last name i don't want to <laughs> so basically he was in charge of brand new congress mm -hmm. when brand new congress merged with justice democrats he became uh the leader of uh, both more or less mm -hmm. and him and the the chief i forget her name but the chief of the staff of the justice democrats are effectively and now in control of it now that the uh half the board is gone which was uh jank and uh kyle so they're in charge of it. I mean, I look at this very much as a coup, a power play done by them, but I also see it as uh, the biggest winner from this uh, I see is the Democratic establishment yeah. Yeah. because they had a strong challenger that was unified against them. It had, was getting large amounts of candidates and that was putting them together. And um, one thing also that Matt mentioned to me that uh, I thought interesting was that the current Justice Democrats were only going for people that uh, – had what's the word i'm looking for that only didn't take PAC money that there was you know there used to be a much larger uh, uh thing that people had to agree to that was softened up so i mean and we're going to see how this works out but it looks like this could be the end of the justice democratic movement i mean maybe if they pull, pull it together i don't know i don't i can't predict the future but oh. right before the midterm, yeah, you is, know, this is detrimental to the entire left, progressive, democratic socialist movement that we're seeing building well, the, um, just alternative candidates to the corporate machine, the democratic machine. And having you know, this is a move to me that I would expect from the DNC. This shouldn't be happening from progressives the way I see it. They're they're We, we should be able to see that voting mm -hmm. record. We They should release who voted for it, and because um, we should still be able to support the Justice Democrats' uh, candidates. You know, we need to hold the, the people that voted on this accountable because this could have a domino effect that could possibly risk a lot of people's chances to win next year. Yeah, no, I, I think that that's the big point, is that right now everyone has to find their Justice Democrat candidates because they're now left without a paddle Yeah, um, where they had the ability to get on the show. And everyone that went, went on TYT, or, you know, the Rebel headquarters they did, was getting, you know, it was a system that was working. And, you know, it's not as much that, you know, it's just that, oh, if any, really if any group had done something like this, I would have been behind it. I'm all, for, again, I'm for changing the status quo. But, you know, a lot of what this network is about is doing things that help people that are less fortunate in, become, become systematically 
more able. You're watching Hard Lens Media.